Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days, coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're going to show you how to make your airbrush work for you. Right now, we're jumping into that Nolzer's Marvelous Pigments Monsters Paint Set D&D. &D. I believe Army Painter is responsible for this. I mean, I know they are. So this is the Owl Bear. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your airbrush work for you using these new pigments. Frost blue up on deck. There's 36 new war paints in this set. Real quick, we're going to use some black primer and we're going to get our airbrush ready. Play around with these pigments. So I'm going to try to isolate some of the brightest colors as you saw. See how they work through the airbrush. See how they differ from maybe some of the other army painter pigments. I'm going to let you guys know how I feel about these. So real good so far with that frost blue it's an icy ass color man this we could have named this video the icy is blue in the game for sure now i do think that some of these are 100 percent color match with the previous war paint set maybe not all i'm gonna have to get my facts straight from army painter so what i did right there guys is i thinned down that blue for a second pass it's one of my patented techniques for when i do my first base coat we're gonna go to ghostly blue we're gonna mix it in the pot let it mingle with some of that frost blue this is an icy blend. We're going to stir it up, put some flow improver in it. You guys know the situation. Really what this video is about is being brave. Get in there with the airbrush. Build up those highlights. Get those transitions to pop. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I like to marry the previous colors to the new color. To kind of create a mid-tone. And then we go from there. We've been doing a lot of pre-shading and a lot of videos. Now we're kind of doing one of my old school, like we're painting straight with the colors, building up those highlights, making them look their best. I love transitions. I think that's what everyone loves about airbrushes. We're going to work it in, kind of top down, let it skitter down the feathers. We're not going to really overthink it. We want it to just look electric. This is the owl bear, but he's more like the parrot bear when I'm done with him. We're going to be just slinging that ghostly blue in, brightening it up, letting it be more electric, give us some nice transitions, maybe highlights, who knows? The feathers are gonna have a lot of dimension to them. This video is definitely gonna take it to that, you can put it on the table, feel real good about a stage, and then later on Twitch, we'll take it to that next level, cut in some of those details in the feathers, but I really just wanna isolate some of the techniques I use with the airbrush and how I combo off the paintbrush. So we're building it up nice, taking our time, the paints are reacting, Pretty good with the airbrush. With a little flow improver in there. They got a good stick. Now here's a, here's a color I like right here. This is this like, I looked at it as white, but it has a tinge of blue in it. I don't even know what the name of it is. But as soon as I saw it, I knew it was the color for me. We're gonna mix it in with that ghostly blue. These are all new colors I gotta learn the names of. And we're gonna just start comboing off those highlights. Giving that super bright effect. Now it's a lot brighter here than it is in real life. It's wet, therefore it's a little bit more vibrant, but also the light kind of blows out white. As it dries, it'll look a little bit more natural, but we are definitely trying to have it look real bright. Something to remember, paints when they're wet always look a lot more vibrant than they do when they dry. So that's why I like to always go to 11, because I, I want it to still be a 10. So we're getting some good effects here. We're just repeating every step. Now we're going to take that new blue, that white blue, whatever it's called, and we're going to put it in the pot without marrying any of the colors together. We're going to go raw dog on this one, guys. This will be the final highlight on that blue feather buildup. I'm kind of envisioning like just this awesome Jack Zinch Demon Prince from 40K, but with uh, cute little barn owl ears, I guess. <laughs> Not an owl scientist. I assume it's a barn owl. And now we're going to do the final highlight. We're not going to just keep undoing or going over everything. We're trying to make the highlights smaller and smaller as we go. And you're going to be surprised how tight you can get in here, how much work you can do, especially for the next few steps after we get this blue locked in. It's an amazing workup so far. Now we're going to grab this crimson red or I don't know. I have to, like I said, to learn these colors. I'm just pulling them out of the box. This purple. We're going to sling them together. We're going to kind of red the purple up a little bit. Do our best. Get a good mix. Now we're going to pull out the old paintbrush. Luckily, this box set comes with paintbrushes. So we're going to grab the base coat one and we're going to just go to town. We're going to thin it down. 
We're gonna operation pit, uh, paint is super thin. It's glaze, and we're just gonna play with it. We're gonna start glazing it on. We're gonna do multiple thin coats because I don't like to undo the details. There's some very fine details in these feathers. I don't want to slap it on all thick in one coat. So I like to do a super water thin workup. I'm using a little bit of medium uh, or flow improver to thin my paints down a little bit. We're just gonna build it up. We're gonna isolate all the regions of the feathers, get a good base coat established. Then we're gonna be right back to the airbrush. He's got some fun little beard feathers. We're just gonna start popping off, getting all the base coats set up. So that way they can dry and we can go to the next step. Beard feathers, love these little guys. Look at that. Paintbrush, so far so good. Definitely not the uh, best in the game, but it's very usable. Rust Monster. We're gonna use a couple thin coats on the beak. Now we'll be straight with you. This color doesn't stick very well. Took definitely a few more coats than I wanted. Maybe because I didn't shake it enough. There's a lot of medium in these paints. Uh, so usually what I do is I drain some of the medium, but I followed the instructions of the bottles that said shake really good. And I'm feeling like there might be an overload of medium in there because it also looks kind of shiny when it dries. But that's no big problem. You just throw a matte varnish over it, it's all good in the hood. This purple red that we made, I'm loving the stick on this. That's exactly how I want my paint to react. We're gonna bang out a second coat real quick and then we're gonna be ready to airbrush after this coat dries. We're just trying to introduce some fun colors, go through all the colors. I'm really happy with that blue, really happy with the purple and I'm going to make that orange work. I've got a couple ideas, some tricks up these sleeves. Keep it going. All right. Second pass on the beak. Keep it thin. I'm adding a lot more flow improver to let it disperse. All right, we're all, while all that dries, we're gonna stay busy in the beat slab. We're gonna grab that troll skin. It's a nice dark green. We're gonna thin it down like crazy. We're gonna glaze it in on the feet, the hands, everything. We're just gonna go to town, okay? It's nice and thin, glaze worthy, so it's actually gonna stick to the blue pretty nicely. Some of that blue's gonna show through. It's gonna be perfect. It's exactly what I want as we let these other coats dry, always stay busy. Do the claws, do the, do the palms of the hands. Be sure to make sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want it blotchy. You gotta reach and grab a little bit of water to smooth it out. Stay in motion, stay working off the wet edge. Now here's a cool color I like, this rosy skin. This is a great highlight color for that orange, that monster rust. We're gonna blend some in real quick. One, two, three, look at that. Just mixed a little bit in with the orange as a highlight color. That's a beautiful color. That rosy skin is on point. I'm going to be using that on a lot of models of the future. I can tell you that. Look at that. Great color. Good stick. Good, good hue. Get that bottom tooth. Make it look its best. This parrot owl is looking great so far. I'm really happy with the sculpt. And now here's a color I've been excited for. Pixie dust pink. Let's do it guys. We're gonna mix it in the airbrush. We're gonna thin it down. Of course, we're gonna mix it in a little bit with that purple we made earlier. And we're gonna just grab the hobo shield and we're gonna just lightly airbrush some transitions to those feathers. We're gonna be real thin, 99% air, 1% paint. Be methodical, be patient, let it build up naturally. Start building your confidence on where the flow is going you'll realize how close you can get to that blue without actually getting on that blue. Good stuff, I'm using the air right now to dry it up. Keep moving. We're gonna get real ambitious with the airbrush and we are gonna be highlighting a lot of this guy now. We get that hand. We're not gonna get any on the green, any on the blue, just gonna aim kind of center mass. Let those feathers take on the quality of that pixie dust pink. Get under the feathers, everything. It's just basically airbrush glaze. Several thin coats. Now on the beard, obviously we're not gonna be able to airbrush that very easily. So what we're gonna do is just take the same mix in the airbrush, put it on our paintbrush, kind of glaze in a quick highlight. Now we're gonna add more pixie pink, less of the mid-tone, and it's gonna get a little brighter and we're gonna be going more toward the tips and we're gonna try to pop that transition out. My favorite thing about airbrushing is getting those colors to look exciting. I absolutely love transitions and we're even going to sneak a little bit of white into the pot and we're going to go that next 
uh, like that level 11 like we're talking about. Always take it to 11 because you best believe I'm going to be introducing some glazes, maybe some washes to this model on Twitch. So I want all of our colors to be at that 11 just in case I decide to go crazy. I still want him to pop through. I want to make this guy look as best as electric as possible. I mean, you've seen the owlbear, right? Coming through the woods all brown and scary. But what about this dude drops down from the trees coming at you? Kaka! Yeah, you ready for that? Same thing, highlight the beard. That dude's got a fresh beard. Okay, green flame. I'm excited for this color. I've been waiting to use this the whole video. Now we're going to just start airbrushing some in on the claws using the hobo shield when we can to kind of save his knees. We don't want to get airflow and weird angles. And then anywhere we think we have the confidence to boost it up, we're going to go to town. And what we're just trying to do is just feather in this new flame green into that troll skin. We're just trying to create a nice transition because we will go back with the paintbrush. We will engage some more details, but I want all of the of the areas looking their absolute freshest. I'm basically showing you how much you can do with the airbrush and how short of a time to get ready for all those final stages. This entire project today took me about an hour and 15 minutes of airbrushing with a little bit of paint brushing. took longer for the primer to dry. We're going to scoot in on his feet, get some of those electric greens in there. Make him look his absolute best all day, every day. Owl Bear, aka Parrot Bear, Dungeons and Dragons, Monsters paint set, Nozules, Nozers, Marvelous Pigments. I don't know how to say it yet, but there he is. We're going to take him to that next level. Super happy with this guy. Anyway, guys, play on players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.